welcome to our tiny house on wheels. Can give you guys a quick tour. Come on in. Um, this is where we keep most of our medicine and sacred items. Um, some seashells, that type of thing. Our feathers, which are very precious to us. Um, we got this nice seat cover at a treaty store in Saskatoon. And this is our little mini Christmas tree we have. Keeping it festive in here. Carlin's drum and medicine bag. Over here we have our storage bins. And they just open like so. Our mini wood stove, mini tool kit that we also got from Cubic Mini. Over here we have our table. This is made from repurposed pallet boards, which is really nice. And Carlin's mama, Julia, made us these cushions and she's not with us anymore. So they're really precious to us. Um, inside here, we also have storage inside both of these, one for each of us. This converts down into a love seat as well, just by unscrewing this. We just use gas pipe fittings to do this. So you just unscrew it, drop it down, and then we have another cushion on the bed that goes on top, and voila. Made these uh, curtains myself, and it was our first sewing project, so some of the hems aren't great, but it works. Just connect them with snaps and little leather scraps. These are our batteries that tells us what they're at. Right now we're plugged in, so 100%, which is nice to see. We have our second little miniature Christmas tree. Um, this is where we cook, usually only when we're plugged in. Most of what we do is off-grid, so in that case we'd be using the stove. Carlin built all of these and then I painted them and added the handles. So we've got plates and bowls and pots and pans. And then these two are for food storage. We've got a mini fridge, just opens like so. It's quite a bit of room actually, and it's a really low power draw to have it running in the background. Um, all this teak is repurposed, which is nice. We've got little towel works going along the kitchen. We've got our sink, which we also repurposed. And underneath, this is our only gray water tank on the bus. It's just a Home Depot bucket with a hole cut on the top. We take it out, we dump that. We only use soap that's eco-friendly and then we just make sure that we're not dumping right by a water source, but nothing harmful goes down the sink whatsoever. And that's it for our gray water. We have an outdoor shower that attaches onto the back deck of the bus. And again, we only use one kind of soap that's earth friendly. And again, making sure we're away from a fresh water source if we use that, which is rarely. Here's our bed back here where we sleep nice and comfy we did have a projector screen set up back here before and a projector but it broke so that's gone we've got our mini split here which is heat and ac um, but again we usually only use that when we're plugged into a power source as it is a large draw so rarely usually we use our wood stove for heat which in canada is more of an issue than ac at least for the winter back here we've got two little storage closets um, just for storing whatever. This one has hooks in it for hanging clothes. And our bathroom, <laughs> which we just use little touch lights with batteries so you can't see too well. But we've got a composting toilet, a small garbage can, some hooks for storage, some baskets for storage, this cabinet for our bathroom things, some cute little cloths that Carl and Samal also gave to us. <laughs> pose up at the front as well. We've got our shoe storage. This opens up for storage as well, which is mostly just things from working mechanically on the bus that we shove in there or toilet paper and paper towel. Got my book collection, small cupboards up here for things too. And then we ended up keeping this from the original school bus and we call it our bread box. <laughs> but again, it's kind of just like a junk drawer. Um, but mostly for food as well. So like bread, potatoes, rice, heavier items like that. But yeah, we call it our bread box. We also have our solar panels up on the roof and our back deck where we store our bikes and sometimes hang out after a hike, that kind of thing. Probably use it more in the summer. Hey, I'm Carlin Janvier. I'm Shani Kirby. What led us to doing this, or me personally, was this nomadic lifestyle 
pretty much was basically been a dream of mine for quite some time. And finding a partner who actually had the same dream and wanted to fill, fulfill it was amazing. So yeah, we bought a bus and started on our build. Um, yeah, so far we've been living in it for about three months and it's been amazing. Yeah, um, it has been really good. It's afforded us so much freedom and just being able to go where we want to go and do what we want to do and fill our days with things that are meaningful to us. Um, what led me to this was same thing. It had always been a long-term goal to do this and eventually also to hopefully get a piece of land and do a tiny house and homestead in that way as well. And I'm all in for that. So. <laughs> <laughs> for the future. For right now, we still want to enjoy this for as long as possible. Yeah. Um, but I think it became more of a reality that we were able to do it. We both got sober almost a year ago. We we're yeah. about to be celebrating a one year anniversary of sobriety. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> anyways, that's right around the time when we bought the bus and threw ourselves into the build. So it kind of became a passion project to keep ourselves busy in the early days when it was harder then. Now it's easier. I don't want to get cocky about it, but <laughs> so much happier, so much more joy, so much more love and it just, getting sober and, and making those changes, doing that internal work just made me realize that I could do these things. I was more powerful than what I knew and why not live our dreams? We've got this life, let's do it. So mm -hmm. that's what led me to it. Our bus model is a 2002 GMC. It's a 36 passenger, six window bus. It's got a Cat 3126 engine, Allison transmission. Um, so far it's been good to us. The only issue we've had technically or mechanically would be the alternator which went on us a few days ago but we got it all rebuilt and sorted out um yeah maintenance just keep up with it and you should be good design and build of the bus like obviously we love our wood stove it's the heart of our build keeps us warm every night shout out to cubic mini um yeah shani's beautiful tile work here my personal favorite of the bus is the woodworking in here as well as the beautiful tiles. Um, we wanted to keep the colors of the wood a little bit dark to keep it a little more cozy in here. Um, thankfully we had some teak that was given to us. Um, we repurposed it. Um, the woodwork on the wall by the kitchen sink is my favorite woodworking in here and the electrical was a big learning curve for me. I figured that all out just by some research and picking away at it. The carpentry, I've had a little bit of carpentry skills from previous work experiences, so that came into play, um, as well as just hobbies of woodworking, making furniture projects. So for the build, we did have an initial plan. We drew up a plan that all completely changed <laughs> as we went. The bus basically was just building itself at that point. Um, but we found that tackling one thing at a time and setting out goals for each day that we were building was the easiest way to make sure that things were getting done and that we didn't get overwhelmed with the enormity of this project. Um, so we also split things up. Sometimes we'd come together to work on things, but Carlin is very skilled with carpentry and problem solving in very smart ways. Um, and I was more, I suppose, creative and grunt labor <laughs> all the time. We also split up tasks, so let's say Carlin was working on mounting the solar panels, I was working on doing tile work, he was working on electrical, I was working on plumbing, um, those types of things. That way we didn't uh, get in each other's way too much and we both kept really busy working alongside each other and then when we had a problem, um, we'd come together and kind of put our heads together on it and then each go back to our respective projects. So that's kind of how we organized our build. Um, some of my favorite features of the bus are definitely just that really simple window film we put for privacy on the bathroom and some of the windows that are covered up from the build so they wouldn't be visible anyways. So from the outside it looks quite pretty. I really enjoy that. Um, I also love all of our hidden storage. We've got storage in the booth seats, we've got storage up at the front of the bus, we've got storage bins here for the dogs and dirty laundry for our wood. We've got bathroom storage, storage under in these drawers all through here. We just put storage and hooks everywhere we could and that was a really good call. Um, 
because it's a living in a tiny space, so want to maximize that as much as you can. So living tiny for us so far, um, it's easier than I thought it would be. I, I thought we were going to have so little room and could barely bring anything, but we still have the things that are important to us. We still have a whole book collection. Carlin has his guitar. We've got two dogs in here. You need so much less than what you think you do and I think often with possessions they end up almost owning you or holding you back and when you let go of some of that and just take the things that truly give you joy and that you're using every day um, or on a regular basis it does leave more room for joy having less stuff and I'm really happy with it. Also, there's more of a focus on self-reliance, which is a really satisfying feeling and kind of just boosts your self-confidence, your self-esteem that you're relying on yourselves to get things done when things go wrong. We deal with our own waste through the bathroom by having a composting toilet, which does take some work, but it's satisfying knowing that we're handling all that stuff ourselves. The must-haves for schoolie builds, I believe, would be this a wood stove. Um, not only does it heat the bus very well, um, it provides us an extra space to cook um, and not use power from our battery bank. Um, so I think it's like the must-have for schoolies. My must-haves for a schoolie, I guess, and for our must bus, is having a really comfy bed. We splurged and bought a brand new one um, because it's not something we're just using for weekend getaways. We live here and so we really wanted to make it feel um, like a home. And so having a really comfy bed is a must have, I would say. And also having a composting toilet is another one of our must haves along with the wood stove because I really didn't want to be dealing with um, block water tank, septic tank, all those chemicals, having to dump all that water waste. Um, so the composting toilet, I would also say, is one of our must-haves. As for sustainability and green living, um, obviously we're in an old school bus, which chugs diesel, which is not ideal. Um, however, a footprint of living like this is still substantially less than living in a house in Saskatchewan where um, the footprint is much la larger, um, heating costs and all of that. Most of what we do is off-grid living. Um, so our toilet is composting. We also have solar panels. Um, those are kind of our biggest green things we have in here. Also just far less consumerism in general. We buy less stuff. We consume less. Um, we don't do online shopping, any of those types of things. So for us, this is less of a footprint than other ways of living. It's still not perfect. I think the best we can do is for people is do our best where we can, how we can for ourselves, others, and the planet. But um, no human life is going to have zero impact. And so we just do the best we can. Tips for somebody starting out or wanting to do a schoolie project. I would say is to definitely have patience and do a lot of research. Um, be prepared to move one step forward and then 10 steps back because the curve of this roof is definitely a pain in the butt for working around and your carpentry level skills. Um, but yeah, for anyone starting out, just ask for help. There's a lot of um, support through social media and their schoolie forums um, but yeah just have patience and it'll get there you just got to do it <laughs> I know that sounds stupid but you just got to go for it and then work out each problem as it comes and like Carlin was saying ask for help um, and do lots of research and problem solve as you go but really you just gotta have some confidence and jump into it because if we could do it, then anyone could do it, <laughs> truly. A mistake that we made was we did everything else and we left our systems for last. So systems meaning plumbing and electrical, um, just because those were the scariest things to tackle and we were worried about it, so we just kept putting it off. That was a mistake. Um, definitely I would advise do your systems first, then do the rest of the build around it. We were still successful, but it took a lot more work than it would have. Um, another piece of advice is we were able to 
get most of our building materials and lots of our finishing touches too um, from repurposed materials and salvaged materials. So pallet boards are a great thing you can get for free if you go to like a Home Depot Canadian Tire and ask. Uh, sometimes they're just sitting for free on the side of a road. It takes a bit of work, but you can get those looking beautiful and reused. Um, we also asked friends and neighbors if they had any things that they didn't want. And we got um, teak wood that my mom didn't want that was just sitting, getting dust in the backyard. Um, our neighbors gave us things that they pulled from their garage that were just sitting there for years they didn't need. So ask people if they have things they don't need anymore. Habitat for Humanity Restore is another really great resource where you can get things for very cheap. It's going to a good cause. And um, your build doesn't have to be so expensive. Splurge on the things that matter, like the electrical system, and you can repurpose and salvage most everything else. Choose this lifestyle um, because the freedom to roam pretty much and to wake up to a different view every morning out of our front window was just a nice dream and we're living it so yeah I honestly just love the aspect of going wherever we want and the freedom to roam. Thanks for the things